This is the section of Chapter 6 where we're going to talk about anaerobic cellular respiration, um, essentially fermentation. On the picture here of somebody's beautiful drawing on the whiteboard is the left-hand side. This is the process of gaining energy from glucose after the glycolysis step without oxygen, and fermentation can follow two different paths. So for a rundown of what this short lecture will cover, uh, first we're going to talk about the difference of aerobic versus anaerobic. I'm going to take you quickly through the process of glycolysis so that you understand how we start with our three carbon molecule. And we'll talk about how this fermentation process happens in animals and in fungi, or I should probably have put microorganisms on that slide. And that leads us to the final point here where anaerobic respiration has two pathways. Both are called fermentation. One produces lactic acid and one produces alcohol and carbon dioxide. I'm pretty sure you can guess which one happens in animals and which, ones hap which one happens in microorganisms, but we'll talk about it a little more anyway. To set you up for understanding fermentation, we're going to talk about glycolysis, and this here is the first step. This will be in all of the lectures so you can really get a handle on what's happening in glycolysis. On the left, this simple chain is representing glucose, even though we know that glucose has a structure more like the green hexagon here. To better understand what's happening in glycolysis, this will be a representation of glucose. And in the first step, glucose is basically broken from broken down from a six car carbon molecule into three, I'm sorry, into two three carbon molecules. These are each pyruvic acid. This process requires two ATPs. So you don't start gaining energy right off the bat in glycolysis. In fact, you have to invest energy initially in order to get the payout. So you use the two ATPs, one for each molecule, which attaches a phosphate to each pyruvic acid. And in the next step, this is where a molecule you'll become at least familiar with the name of NAD plus comes into play for each of these molecules. NAD plus essentially accepts two electrons from your pyruvic acid and attaches a phosphate to the other end. Accepts two electrons and attaches a phosphate. Therefore, NAD plus becomes NADH. For the third step of glycolysis, this is where ATP is generated. When two ADPs come along, one for each side, these phosphate groups become attached to each ADP, and then you have therefore generated two ATPs for each molecule. So from your singular glucose that started over here, you ended up with the two three carbon chains, and you get a total of four ATPs once it's broken down. You already spent two, you made four, so essentially you've gained two ATPs. This is glycolysis, the first step of aerobic respiration as well as anaerobic respiration. So we haven't yet discussed the difference between aerobic and anaerobic, so I just want to mention it before we move forward here. Uh, I, it seems pretty obvious um, the, the difference where aerobic means in the presence of oxygen or with air, and that's just like it sounds, aerobic. One way I've been told to remember it, if you do have a hard time with it, is um, everybody's done an aerobic aspect to their workout in some degree. So that's the part that generally gets you to breathe pretty heavy. So breathing heavy with oxygen, aerobic. Uh, the other part to keep in mind is anaerobic. That means without oxygen. Often if you have the an as a prefix in front of a word, it means without. So this is without the presence of oxygen. And this is what we're going to talk about is generating energy in your cells without the presence of oxygen. We already went through the brief introduction of glycolysis, and that really is the main way 
that your body gains energy from glucose in the absence of oxygen. As you can tell, all of the energy processing happens here. Your glucose is broken into two, three carbon molecules, py pyruvic acids, and your ATPs are already generated. In this step, you have used ATPs and uh, generated, used two ATPs and generated a total of four, so your net gain is two ATP molecules. The reason each of these processes go forward to produce different products is to recycle this NAD plus molecule. It is incredibly important. It's critical for accepting electrons in this process. But in order for this process to occur, you have to have NAD pluses. So the electrons on NADH have to be removed. That occurs here. Your NADH redonates those electrons to your three carbon molecules. Now this is lactic acid fermentation, making lactic acid at the end. So therefore your NAD plus can be recycled back into the glycolysis process. Now remember, unlike cellular respiration, this all occurs in the cytosol of the cell. So what you need to know about lactic acid fermentation in muscle cells, you do generate two ATP for every molecule of glucose. The purpose in getting to your final product is to recycle the NAD pluses and in muscle cells lactic acid is your product. Now maybe you're asking why does the body do both aerobic respiration and anaerobic respiration? What's the point? Often what happens is when you are exercising your body will burn up all of the excess ATPs that are generated in aerobic respiration, it's approximately 32 AP ATPs that you'll gain from one molecule of glucose versus here in fermentation where you only get two ATPs per one molecule of glucose. But cellular respiration relies on oxygen as a proton, I'm sorry, as an electron acceptor at the end. But when your body can't provide enough oxygen to accept all those electrons, your cells automatically move into fermentation as a form to continue, or as a process, to continue to generate energy. Now we're going, after looking here at lactic acid fermentation in muscle cells, we're going to look at alcoholic fermentation in microorganisms. Typically, or what we're most familiar with will be yeasts, where it'll start the same way. You've got your six carbon molecule of glucose. It requires, well, you've, you've got your regular, then the regular glycolysis process occurs. So you burn two ATPs, generate four, come out with a total of two after you do the math. NAD plus and NADH are used as your electron transporters. You get the two three carbon molecules of pyruvic acid, but the next step is slightly different in that your NADHs give up their electrons, but two molecules of carbon dioxide are released, and instead of lactic acid, which is a three carbon molecule, you end up with two ethyl alcohol molecules, leading to the alcoholic content of beer and wine. CO2, which gets you can use to maintain the carbonation in the beer or in wine, it is released because you don't generally want your wine to be carbonated unless you're making champagne. That's a whole other story. So what you need to keep in mind is that essentially fermentation is glycolysis with two different outcomes. In human cells, lactic acid is generated. In microorganisms, ethyl alcohol and carbon dioxide are generated. These are the two processes put right next to each other, so hopefully you can see the difference. They start the same with glucose, requires two ATPs, generates four, you are left with a surplus of two ATPs. Glycolysis occurs. In each step you get your three carbon chains of pyruvic acid, but in human cells, animal cells, 
the electrons are donated, which generates the waste product of two lactic acid molecules, which are three carbons. In microorganisms, your two electrons are still donated back to the molecules, but carbon dioxide is released. So there are two of your carbons that go as one waste product, and then two ethyl alcohol molecules, which are your waste products, making an alcoholic, a tasty alcoholic beverage. So we covered very generally anaerobic cellular respiration. Remember the difference between aerobic and anaerobic is with oxygen and without oxygen. Glycolysis is the main process by which energy is garnered using fermentation. The byproducts are different in an animal cell versus fungi or microorganism cells, and that represents the two different pathways, which are both called fermentation, but the different products are lactic acid and alcohol and CO2. And as you know, 